Welcome back to Clinical Optics Made Easy. We're going to do our second part of prisms, so let's jump right in. So today's servings in our blue plate special, we're going to first take prisms and turn those into lenses, and then we're going to spend a lot of time on Prentice's rule because that's very high yield. And as we say in every lecture, everything that we're talking about today can be found in this book and in lots of optics books. So find something that you'd like to read and as always, work lots of problems. Now, what if I took two prisms and I stack them base to base, as you're seeing here? The light rays are going to enter, as they always do, but now, which way will they bend? Well, rule number one says that they will bend towards the base, no matter how I orient them. So, as you can see here, the top and the bottom prism are both bending towards the base, but because they're stacked, they are converging. And this represents a plus lens. Two prisms stacked base to base. All the rules are being enforced here. It is bending towards each other convergence. Now if I draw a line right through the middle, that is that exception to Snell's law, right? Where it hits very perpendicular and doesn't bend at all. In a plus lens, or any lens, it has what's called an optical center, where the lines don't bend. And that's why, because of Snell. Now here, I'm stacking two prisms apex to apex, and as you can see, because of law or rule one, the rays are bending towards the base, and in this case diverging, this is clearly a minus lens. But a minus lens, two prisms stacked apex to apex. Now suppose I have a patient that looks one centimeter down from the optical center of his minus two monocle. Never in my 20 years have I prescribed a monocle, but I have always wanted to. So if you have a patient that wants one, please send them my way. But in this case, the patient's got a monocle, it's a minus two, and he's looking one centimeter down from the optical center. And we know that a minus lens is two prisms stacked apex to apex. And what I want to know is what prismatic effect is being induced here. So let's look at a diagram of that. So here he is looking down through his monocle and now he's looking down into a base down prism, right? Because he's not looking right in the middle. He's not at the optical center. He's downwards. And so you would think that there'd be a formula to calculate how much prism is going to kick in when he does that. And of course, there's always a formula, right? Uh, it's probably a good thing. But in this case, it says that the prismatic power that your glasses induce is equal to the dioptric power of your glasses multiplied by the distance you look away from the optical center in centimeters. It's great that it's in centimeters. Let's go back to our problem. Patient is looking one centimeter down from the optical center of a minus two monocle. So what prismatic effect? So now we have a formula. So diopteric power is minus two. He's looking one centimeter away. So we have two prism diopters being induced. But prisms, as you now know from the experiments, matter in the orientation. So which way you point the base is very important. So we need to know two prism diopters oriented which way. And because we're looking base down, it's two prism diopters base down. Here I have a patient looking five millimeters down from the optical center of her plus three monocle. And you, this is something that you may see on an exam. They're not going to give it to you necessarily in centimeters. They're going to ask if you understand the metric system, which you do. Uh, just pay attention to the question so that you don't immediately put that as five and not as 0.5. So here we go. So D is three, uh, H is 0 0.5, and that gives us 1.5. Uh, prism diopters, but what orientation? And here they are looking down from the optical center in a plus lens, and plus lenses are two prisms stacked base to base, and so it is a base up 1.5. But like I say, almost no one wears monocles anymore, and so more likely you'll see a question like this. Patient's looking some distance down from the optical center of her glasses, and then they're going to give you a, a prescription, as you can see we have here. And what is the prismatic effect? Here's the key. Work the two eyes separately 
and then we're going to put them together at the end. So one eye was a plus two sphere, the other eye was a minus one sphere. Fortunately, uh, they have to look down at the same distances, right? And so you can see here that we're getting one prism diopter over the right eye, 0 0.5 over the left. And what are the orientations? Well, it's a plus lens on the right, and so it's base up, and a minus lens on the left, base down. Now, here's the big question. How do we put these two things together? In other words, will the patient measure as a right or a left hyper, and will that measurement be 1.5 or 0 0.5? Because here's what we're getting. We've got one prism diopter base up over the right, one half base down over the left. I could tell you the answer, but I'd rather you do the experiment. So in your box of prisms, I want you to grab a four and a six, and then grab your buddy, and I want you to hold it four prism diopters base down over the right eye, six base up over the left, and do cross cover. And then tell me, are you measuring something that you can see or something that you can't see? Because I'll tell you that if it's just two prism diopters, you're probably not going to see hardly any movement at all. But at 10, uh, it's hard for us to suppress that. And so you'll see some pretty good motion. So when you do this orientation, do you see vertical movement or do you not? And again, I think that you should do these experiments. It's going to cement this into your head. After you finish experiment number four, take those same prisms orient them the same way over the right and left eye, both base down or both base up, it doesn't matter. Measure again, and now do you see movement? Is it measuring at 10, where you can see the movement, or two, where you can't? Well, hopefully, here is what you saw, that when the prisms were oriented in opposite directions, you did see movement. And in this case, it's 1.5 right hyper. Why right hyper? Because the right eye went up higher than the left eye because it's base up over the right eye, base down over the left. So again, strabismus is the distance between the positions of the eyes. Here we have a patient that looks 20 millimeters down from the optical center of her glasses. And here's the prescription. And what prismatic effect are we getting? Here, plus lenses on both eyes. This one will probably be easier, right? So we separate the eyes again, and we figure out that it's 6 on the right, 10 on the left, and these are both going to be base up, right? Because we're looking down through a plus lens, which are two prisms stacked base to base. So here's what the patient's looking through. Aren't these great diagrams? Yeah, I mean, this is, this is my artistic limit right there drawing those things. So you can see here that when we're sending the eye in the same direction, we have to subtract the difference because we sent the right one up by 6, the left one up by 10. So the difference between the two eyes, which is what strabismus is, is only 4. So this is a 4 diopter left hyper, and it's left and not a right hyper because the left eye was sent up higher. So here's my advice. Work both eyes separately, and we're looking for the distance between the eyes. So if the eyes are being sent in opposite directions, we're going to add those two values. But if they're being sent in the same direction, we have to subtract because, again, we're looking for the distance between the eyes. Well, it's all well and good until we add cylinder. Right, so here we go, we, we have to tackle this. It's really not that bad, bear with me. Patient looks 30 millimeters down, so again, uh, wanting to know if you know the metric system. And here's the prescription, and we've got SIL, and look at that, I have an axis 180 on one and 90 on the other, I wonder if that's gonna make a difference. We start out, as we have, working the eyes separately, but now, we have two lenses over each eye because that's what a spherocylindrical lens is. It's a sphere and a cylinder. So you have to kind of break those out, which is 
very straightforward. It told you it was a plus three and a plus one on the right, a plus five and a plus two on the left. So we can work them. All, so we got four formulas going here. And here's what we get. Now, here's the thing about cylinder. I get to ignore anything that's not acting in the direction that she's looking. So if she's looking up or down, she's looking vertically. So only cylinder in that meridian of the eye moving counts. In other words, the right eye cylinder counts because it's plus one vertically. Remember, the axis is only a label. It is perpendicular to where the power is. The axis has no power whatsoever. So if I have an axis of 180, there's no power at 180. The power is entirely up and down at 90. So since she's looking down, she's going to get prism vertically. So I have to account for that. But on the other side, I have no power whatsoever vertically. All of the power in uh, this plus two sill axis 90 is horizontal because once again, I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but these are things that uh, were kind of hard for me as a resident to wrap my head around. The axis is a label. It has zero power. It's perpendicular to where the power of that cylinder is. So if I have an axis of 90, there's no power 90, no power vertically. All the power is horizontal. So here's what I'm left with. Clearly on the left side, it's easy now. I just have that plus five to deal with. It's 15 prism diopters base up because I'm looking down through a plus lens, which are two prisms stacked base to base, and I'm 15 base up. But on the right, I have two lenses kind of stacked on top of each other. How do I figure that out? So here's where it could be confusing. So let's take a little bit of time here. When we stack prisms over the same eye, and that's what we're doing on the right eye, we've got two base up prisms on the same eye, they become additive when we stack them on top of each other. When we are talking about prisms on opposite eyes, on right eye and left eye, then we subtract because the both eyes are being sent in the same direction and strabismus is the distance between those two eyes. But if we're only talking about a single eye and we have two prisms there, if I have a Let's say, well, use these numbers. If I have a nine uh, base up and a three base up, I will add those together. And that will give me a 12 base up total. So that's what I have on the right. I have 15 on the left. And now it looks like the other problems that came before. And you know that I am sending both eyes up. 12 for the right. 15 for the left, and so I need to subtract because strabismus is the distance between. So it's going to be three prism diopters. But the question now is, is it going to be a right hyper or a left hyper? And once again, it's whichever eye is sent higher. It's technically correct to call this a three prism diopter right hypotropia, meaning which eye was lower but almost no one says that. So just call it based on what the hyper is. But what I really want you to take away from this is that when we stack prisms, they are additive if they're stacked in the same direction. If they are stacked in opposite directions over the same eye, they nullify. By that, let me give you some numbers. Let's say that I have a 10 prism diopter base up and a five prism diopter base down, and I stack them both on the right eye. Well, then you would subtract the five from the 10 because they would neutralize by five, and you would end up with a total of five base up. But if I had a 10 base up and a five base up all on the right eye, it would be a 15 base up prism total. Hopefully that makes sense to you. You've heard of eye candy? Well, this was eye cake. This is a cake made by a good friend of mine who could make anything into a cake. And so we uh, challenged her to make an eye cake, and here's what she came up with. It was so good. 
So to wrap up today's lecture, I'm going to talk about something that's clinically useful for you. Let's say we have a patient that we know is 20 ET, and this is measured without correction. That's what it is. But we're going to now measure them with their glasses on. And my question to you is, Will they measure 20 ET? Will they measure more than 20? Or will they measure less than 20? And the answer is, it depends on the glasses. Before I get into that, I want to tell you, if you don't know already, that when someone fixates with one of their eyes and they have strabismus, the entire deviation is taken up by the non-fixating eye. What I mean by that is, if I have someone that's 20 XT and they're fixating with their right eye, then the left eye is taking up 20 diopters of XT. It's not 2 and 18 or 10 and 10. All 20 are being taken up by that left eye because that's the non-fixating eye. So whatever glasses are in front of that non-fixating eye are going to impact, because of Prentice's rule, the amount of strabismus that you measure. And this is clinically relevant. So just look at the diagram on the left-hand side, the lighter teal. And so you can see that this patient is looking through plus lenses two prism stacked base to base. And you can see that their left eye looks pretty straight here. So that's the eye that they're clearly fixating with. And their deviation, which in this case is esotropia, isn't taken up entirely over here on the right side. Now, if I were to want to fix someone with ET, which way would I orient the base? Well, the eye follows the base. So if the eye has moved in and I want it to move out some, I'm going to put the base base out. And when the non-fixating eye is looking through base out prism, like it is in this diagram, I'm helping their strabismus. So I'm going to measure less than they really are. They're being partially treated by this plus lens that I'm measuring through. So in other words, when I measure someone with strabismus through plus lenses, they will always measure less than what they truly are because they're being treated. And that's true for esotropia and exotropia because envision this diagram over here on the left. If that eye had been swung out, if they were XT, how do you fix an XT with base in prism? And so if that right eye were um, moved over uh, to the outside, they would be looking through a base in prism. They would be treated by their glasses so they would measure less than they really were. Not the case for the myope over here on the right-hand side. You can see that on this patient, they are looking through minus lenses, apex to apex. The right eye is fixating. The left eye is taking up the esotropia here. But again, the way that we fix esotropia is with base out prism. But over here on the left, with that eye turning in, they're looking through base in prism. That's making their strabismus worse. So when I measure through minus lenses, I will always measure more than what they really are. How much more? It depends upon Prentice's rule, right? Dioptric value. So the higher power glasses give me more error in my measurement. Now in this slide, I'm showing you the case where you have a plus lens on one side, minus lens on the other side. And so whether you over measure or under measure, will depend entirely upon which eye is fixating. Well, that's it for our PRISM lecture today. I would recommend that you read about what to do when your patients come in with prismatic complaints. Read about lowering the optical center. When should you do that? When should you use a process called slab off? So read about that. It's a oral board kind of thing, but it has a lot of clinical relevance. I also would recommend that you read about putting a prism over just one eye instead of splitting it over two and how to calculate that. The thing that you should know is that when we put prism into glasses, it degrades the optical quality. So you may refract someone to 2020, but you put enough prism in front of them, they're going to drop down to 2025, 2030, and so on, depending upon the degree of prism. So there are times when you want to try to limit that to just one eye. So read about that. All those things are in the book uh, and they're in lots of optics books. So up next, we're going to have some fun with lenses. We're going to talk about them in a lot more depth. I appreciate you spending some time with me today. I hope that you come back and uh, do some more. And have a great day.